to this happy place, welcome. Disneyland is your land. Here age relives fond memories of the past. The first day of Disneyland was July 17, 1955. What was supposed to be a happy event rapidly devolved into a complete nightmare. Everything that might have gone wrong did. Even the Associated Press said, Disney disappointed thousands of kids probably for the first time in his career. But why was the park opening such a tumultuous nightmare? Today, we're reflecting on that tragic day, which the cast members called Black Sunday. High cost and not enough time. A theme park costs a lot of money to build. In fact, it is claimed that Disneyland cost $17 million to develop, which was a staggering amount of money in the 1950s. Bankers and even Walt's brother Roy were worried about the financial risk. Some even dubbed this Walt's folly, saying it was sure to fail. But Walt pressed forward, selling his life insurance and various property to help finance the project. With his finances and reputation on the line, he also set an incredibly aggressive and optimistic timeline for the opening. Walt announced Disneyland's opening would be on July 17, 1955, just 366 days after they broke ground. To put this into perspective, construction for Star Wars. Galaxy's Edge started in spring 2016 and then opened in 2019, more than three years later. And that's just one area of the park. Walt was asking his team to fully construct the entire theme park, including the castle and train station, in a year. The crowds. One of the biggest problems with opening day was the number of people who attended. Opening day was planned to be an invitation-only affair with perhaps 15,000 guests. Unfortunately, many more individuals turned up with fake tickets since they were so simple to copy. One financially savvy gentleman even charged folks $5 to use his ladder to climb the fence at the back of the park. There was a seven-mile backup on the Santa Ana freeway with cars trying to get into the park. Nearly 30,000 individuals turned there when 15,000 was expected, which created further problems in addition to fake tickets. Hour-long lines for the attractions, and everything from food to napkins rapidly ran out. Walt, you've made a bum out of Barnum today, but we've got to go. <laughs> I know, but I just want to say a word of thanks to all the artists, the workers, and everybody that helped make this dream come true. A plumber's strike. A few weeks before the opening, a large plumber's strike left Walt in a pickle. There wasn't enough time to finish and install both the bathrooms and the water fountains. When faced with the decision, Walt went with the easy choice, drinking fountains. Kidding, he of course went with bathrooms. Dick Nunes, former chairman of Walt Disney Attractions, was in the meeting when the contractor presented this concern to Walt. According to him, Walt's candid answer to the question was, Well, you know they can drink Coke and Pepsi, but they can't pee in the street. Finish the restrooms. But because of this, almost 30,000 people had to purchase drinks that quickly ran out, instead of using a water fountain, and Walt was accused of trying to turn a bigger profit. A very hot day. On July 17, 1955, it was swelteringly hot, even for Southern California. As you may recall, there were no drinking fountains to cool off in the 100 degrees Fahrenheit heat. But an even bigger issue with the heat came right when you walked in. They couldn't actually afford to pave the asphalt on Main Street until the night before the park opened because of the short time to go and limited funding. In those extreme temperatures, of course, it didn't have time to set and harden. People were physically sinking into the ground as they made their way toward the castle. For the occasion, women wearing high heels experienced their own Cinderella moments as they lost their shoes on the street. Not the most glamorous way to be welcomed into the park. 
If you look closely today, you can still see the divots in the asphalt down Disneyland's Main Street, USA. It's hard to fly with Dumbo if Dumbo isn't open. Yet another issue with the timeline and budget constraints was that many of the most highly anticipated attractions weren't ready. Peter Pan's flight, Dumbo, and the rocket to the moon were all still under construction and not operational on opening day. In fact, when visitors went to Tomorrowland, they were greeted with a basic picnic area, not a trip to the future. Additionally, the attractions that were open were breaking down. They were not used to such high capacity. In fact, the Mark Twain riverboat literally began sinking into the rivers of America because it was so overcrowded. And if this wasn't bad enough, there was a gas leak in Fantasyland, which led to three lands, half of the park, being temporarily evacuated. It all worked out. One of the saving graces of this disastrous day was that it was broadcast live on ABC. Of the 165 million people living in the US at the time, 70 million tuned in to watch Walt's newest project debut. This was a star-studded event, with the likes of then-movie star Ronald Reagan, Frank Sinatra, Sammy Davis Jr., and Fess Parker, TV's Davy Crockett. Yeah, and how about that son of yours? I've been buttering up to him all morning, hoping he'd say that about me. Uh, isn't this a riot today? Oh, it certainly is. And, Ryan, you, your first job is down here in the town square. Uh, well, uh, right out here in front of the depot, yes, for the main street and the parade and so forth. We have lots to do. Get busy. Okay. So long, Ron. Thanks for coming. While there were a few hiccups with the broadcast, thanks to the magic of television, no one at home knew about the shortage of food or attraction closures. All they saw were celebrities, Mickey Mouse, and Uncle Walt, promising a magical place like you've never been before. When asked when Disneyland would be complete, in reference to the unfinished attractions, water fountains, and general chaos, Walt delivered one of his most iconic quotes. Disneyland will never be completed. It will continue to grow as long as there is imagination left in the world. Disneyland's opening was certainly a disaster, but it only took seven weeks for the park to welcome its one millionth guest. Thank you.